So we'll look at those diff different type of joints now. So the first joint that uh, will automatically come up is something called the butt joint. Yeah, that's B U T T. That's essentially two pieces of wood pressed up against each other, and you would put a nail or a screw uh, from one side to uh, strengthen it. Now this is not a very good joint, um, and we. While it is used, it's not used very widely. So, what other joint uh, can we use? So, in the same category of the butt joint, but much more uh, decorative is the splined mitre joint, okay, or the mitre joint. You can see, so it just looks very pretty. Yeah, these are 45 uh, degree angles and. Uh, if it's not strengthened, this joint is actually quite weak. So, this is how we uh, strengthen this joint. We add a particular piece here, which adds a lot of surface area to my uh, glue up. Plus, when I try to twist this in this direction, it doesn't twi twist very easily. So, this is the the purpose of this thing called a spline or a biscuit. Okay, so this is the splined mitre joint. Another joint that we use is the finger joint. You can see these teeth. Uh, these slip into each other and they add all of this surface area that you can see between the teeth. So it, it ends up being a very strong joint. Um, and if you look at anything like a bed frame, for example, which is oriented in this direction, you would have this joint being used. A similar joint, again the finger joint, but oriented in this in this way is used for table tops to join the boards of table tops together. Uh, I would use this kind of a joint because this adds uh, the strength, but it cannot be seen. Now let's look at another family of joints called the half lap joints. Here essentially we are saying, if you remember, this was a butt joint and it doesn't have much strength in pretty much any direction. The lap joint on the other hand, when it's put together and you know normally it's just glued up and you'd put a dowel or a screw uh, through the top. These faces here add a lot of, of, of resistance to um, any sort of movement in this direction these faces will stop you from actually rotating the joint itself. Okay? So these are used quite a bit, uh, but there's a variation on these that is used even uh, more. And let me just show you that. So this is the variation on uh, the lap joint. It's called a floating, dove, a floating dovetail joint. As you can see, the shape of this is in uh, what's called a dove a dovetail yeah uh, this is used in the frames of beds so you'll have a bed frame like this and you just have this piece fitting here and on this side there'll be another dovetail which will connect into the other piece making sure that these two pieces do not bow or curve in, in separate directions and uh, you know you'll end up having the entire table or not the tabletop the bed top falling through so this is what holds it together and keeps it parallel to each other. Okay. So it's called a floating dovetail joint. You'll see it in most of the beds that we have. Uh, a similar type of dovetail joint is used in drawers. Yeah, the orientation is this way. Okay. And this is just called a rabbited dovetail. But this thing cannot be pulled out because of the shape of the thing, I cannot pull it out in this direction. There is just no way to actually get this back out. Yeah, so if you look at any of the drawers or most of the drawers in our collections, you will see this uh, kind of a joint being used. Uh, uh, another joint that is used for drawers is, is this dovetail. You can see it here coming in from the sides. Yeah, if you can see this detail and just to show you what it looks like these are my dovetails can you see the shape okay they are the dovetail shape 
when they fit into the other member they cannot be pulled in this direction there's no way you can take this out without breaking a half a dozen pieces of wood here and if you're putting that much force then well you deserve to have something break uh, and finally one of the uh, largest families of joints called the mortis and tenon uh, these joints uh, while being one of the oldest joints are always used in furniture because they uh, have the ability to uh, restrict any motion in the wood you cannot pull them back out you cannot twist them and you cannot bend them yeah so let me show you what this looks like so it's just this much it's a tenon this the 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 projection is called a tenon and the depression is called uh, the mortise when this goes into the hole and is you'll see the two dowels here normally put uh, put in all of this area the shoulders pressed tightly up against the sides here actually stop any motion from happening you can't turn it this way yeah now this is a little loose obviously because these are pieces that we show in demos but um, if you see on your furniture any time probably chairs come together in the front you will have this joint uh, coming in either this way or this way um, now there are some variations on this joint which are also used and maybe i'll just give you a quick for larger members of uh, of uh, pieces of wood like big doors you would have this as you can see it's much larger in size the tenon and there is this split in the middle which when you close it up these two sides actually actually uh, expand a little bit and and block this whole thing from coming back uh, out again so it's pretty much like a self sealing kind of a uh, joint and again there's no way that i can twist it in this direction so you have one more variation on the mortise and tenon joint called the haunched mortise and tenon joint all that all that uh, it's added is this little knob of wood here and uh, you know it's cut from here too when this goes in this adds a little more this portion adds a little more to the surface area that's blocking movement from happening so again it's the same set of things but it's more surface area and hence able to take more load plus it's used for places where in furniture for example uh, often enough you'll have two pieces coming together yes but there's also a third piece getting in here so this normally may not be this big it might actually be cut up a little bit here and you'd have another member going in there at that time this surface area adds a whole load of resistance uh, which this is not able to add as much all of the joints that i'm talking about here are used in the furniture at your stores